Hey, my name is Daniel Anderson, and I have sickle cell disease. And I'm Monica, and I'm the mother of Daniel. Daniel was born with sickle cell, and the only way you can have a child born with sickle cell is both parents have sickle cell trait. Um, I have sickle cell trait, and my husband has sickle cell trait, which at the time, he never knew he had sickle cell trait. I knew I had the trait, and that's how Daniel came out sickle cell disease. Daniel changed my life, I could say, for the better. And the reason I say for the better because it makes me want to learn more about this disease. It makes me want to help and encourage others that's battling the disease and that don't know about the disease. The disease is how we're born with, um, our cells are in a circle shape. And Daniel's cells is like banana, it's like a banana shape. And so the red blood cells are what bring oxygen through our bodies. And his red blood cells get clotted in certain arteries. Um, by him having sickle cell disease, his spleen no longer functions, so he's unable to fight off infection. Um, the way a healthy person will. And with his sickle cell, it tends to like, like his brain. Uh, the doctor told us that Daniel had something called Moya Moya. Um, it's a disease where the aorta is closed off um, and there's no blood flow. And his happened inside the left side of his brain. Um, so he, he suggested brain surgery to repair and try to get blood flow into the brain. Um, that was a scary decision for my family, uh, him doing brain surgery. They did tell us about the pores. We had to start that right away. Well, he get pores placed in his chest and every month he do blood transfusions where they take the sick of blood out and they give him new blood. Um, that was hard, but I said, okay, I need to do this. I was praying and hoping that once we did the transfusions, that would kind of compensate the blood flow to the brain and we would need brain surgery. Um, I prayed about it, asked God to take it away. That didn't happen. Um, I believe it's a process that we had to go through. In the process of us going through it, I looked for someone. I tried to identify with someone that looks like us that is going through the same thing as us, but I couldn't find that. I was so fearful and seeing my son have to have brain surgery, that's not, I couldn't do it. My doctor was like, he needs it, he needs it. I couldn't bring myself to that. Um, they started him on a medication called hydroxyurea. Um, they wanted me to do it uh, before, like I think when he turned four, they wanted me to restart it, but I like, no, it's a cancer causing drug, it's a cancer fighting drug, so I'm not gonna put that toxic in his system, in his body. But by us being put in this position, I researched the hydroxyurea and I have been giving it to him for a year. And I noticed um, for three years, Daniel stayed at 43 pounds and he was like three and a half feet tall. He stayed at that and it didn't move. Um, but last year, like he just sprung up. He started to gain new weight, he started getting taller, like everything just changed. Um, so if there's a parent out there in my shoes and you don't want to give your child um, the hydroxyurea, I urge you just to try it. Maybe it could prevent cells from getting trapped into, his, into the brain or the heart. It, it goes into different parts of the organs. It attacks whatever it attacks. 
take heed to the doctor's advice. I know we like natural remedies, but I also believe that God give, gave me a wisdom to create medication to help us to be able to go through the things in life. Daniel, do you want to tell Kaylee and I about how you felt after the surgery? The brain surgery specifically? The last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last one you just had a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. I wasn't scared because my mom told me the story of Daniel and mine. And then I felt the emotion. And then we were talking about Daniel and the line story. And I was really brave. So would you like me to tell the story that I told you? Yes. So the story we talked about Daniel and the lion's den, um, I told him how they were similar, how Daniel loved God. Um, he trusted God, but he was placed in the lion's den. And when he went into the lion's den, that was a fear that Daniel had going into that lion's den. But Daniel prayed to God even though he was afraid of the lions. And God sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lion. And I gave him a scenario how God would do the same thing for him. That he's afraid of going in doing his brain surgery. But if he prays to God and be brave and courageous like Daniel was, he faced that fear and I told him just pray and God would do like he did for Daniel. He would send angels into the surgery room and be the hands of the doctors. Um, and he would be okay. Right? Yeah. I also would say to the parents, find that one thing or whatever your child um, identify with that will keep them calm or will give them peace. For us, it was Daniel and the lion's den, because he loved that biblical story. Um, practically because they have the same name, Daniel. And that's where I get that name from. So I always bring back of how brave and strong Daniel was. So find that thing in your child's life that makes them feel safe. And when you do that, whatever, whether it's the brain surgery or any type of surgery they have to have or whatever they're going through, Find that thing that will give them peace to go through it. What this whole journey has taught me um, with sickle cell and the surgery and my fears, the number one thing I know you have to have is trust of the doctors that's going to be doing the surgery for your child. And if you don't have that, that fear is still going to be there. And, you know, I prayed to God and I asked him to take the fears and he did give me a peace but I did something different. I researched the doctor, Dr. Ababa. Um, I researched him that morning of me going to the hospital. And as I looked at the doctor that was doing the surgery, um, I knew he did surgeries of babies in the mother's womb and he was this great surgeon. But, you know, as I read his bio, I discovered that he really had a heart for the children. So I felt his heart and I felt his commitment and dedication um, to making the children live a healthy and normal life. That's what his goal was. Uh, so I just urge you with all your fears to do your research and find that doctor that you say, I feel his heart. He has the best interest for my child and go from there. How do you feel after the surgery? After you had the brain surgery? You was glad you did it? I felt good after my surgery. And I was happy that, um, that I could leave after a few weeks. Days. Days. Yeah. How many days did you spend in the hospital after your surgery? 
next days. Okay. How, how many days you had pain? So I had pain. I was in pain for two days. I was in pain for three days. And I was happy I could have been able to use, you, um, eat, do something with my life. I able to um, actually enjoy Play my life. Yeah, and enjoy my life. Um, the nurse was actually nice and stuff, and I could actually enjoy enjoy my stuff and I was playing video games, I was dancing. I had a nice room. First I would like to say uh, to the parents, um, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes so maybe we could kind of relate. When they give you, sometimes the doctor will diagnose you with certain things of your child, but you look at your child and they look healthy and strong and you say, this can't be a true diagnosis of what my child is going through because they look so healthy. Um, they don't look sick. They don't look tired. But with sickle cell children, the outside is different on the inside. Inside, they're fighting, they're battling something that we can't see and we don't even understand. I would suggest to you to, if you don't trust the doctor, get a second opinion. Um, for me, Daniel looked a happy, healthy, no problems, no issue. Like I would have never thought he would have a, he was having silent strokes. I would have never thought that he was having complications with sickle cell because he looked fine. He looked like a fine, fine, healthy little boy. He wasn't growing much, but he was healthy for me. So I just would say I think that's the hardest part of having a child with sickle cell because they don't look like what they're going through. Um, they're really, uh, I guess sometimes they get used to it, their body get used to certain things. So they don't complain as much. As for us, if we have something going on, we know, okay, this is going on. But, but with them doing it over and over and over, they sometimes, I think, get used to it and they don't really complain. Um, and when he had to have the surgery for Moya Moya, uh, I knew that they, they took an artery from the left side of his brain and implanted it into his, um, they implant the, the artery into his brain and in hopes of it, it will make other arteries outside so it would compensate, he would get more adequate blood flow into the brain. But that takes six months to a year for us to know that that surgery, is that surgery doing what it's supposed to do? And I'm praying that it does. Hydration is a very big key. You have to make sure they stay hydrated with water, um, with fluids. And the ports, when he got the ports placed in his chest, the ports was, uh, I think, a little bit more painful than the actual brain surgery because he complained of the ports for a, a while because it has to do with the muscle and the tissue. But with the brain surgery, he complained of, of pain for like three times. Yeah, for three days, and he was fine. He wanted to play, play basketball, dance all those things but I have to kind of remind him his body is still healing even though his, he feel like his body could do certain things that he still have to let his body heal and um, he has to recover um, also I would like to say the nurses were great they knew that he loves to dance so they all came around and cheered and helped him get out of bed and put him in a different element. He was dancing around the hospital with the nurses. So he felt good within, you know, that time he was there. Um, I also would say support. The biggest thing in all of this, dealing with a child with sickle cell or any illness, is support. You need a good support system. Without the support system, it's kind of hard to go through this by yourself. And I did this a long time by myself. It wasn't until this year when my son turned eight 
and he had to do the brain surgery. And I promise, I said, God, if you get us through this, I will not keep silent. I will let others see what this disease looked like. And I also want parents to be able to identify with something that they're going through. I want them to be able to see Daniel like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Which every case is different. Every outcome is different. But I just really wanted you guys to see something different. And I encourage anyone of you, whether you have children or you don't have children, if you know someone that has a, a sick child, support them. They maybe need financial support, um, spiritual support, physical support, somebody just to hug them and they cry and say, it's gonna be okay. Um, until you actually live it, it's kinda hard to understand. And I hope by me sitting here today talking to you guys that you would hear my heart and that you would reach out because this is not easy. It's not easy um, being a parent of a child that fight every day for just to live. And that's what I think sickle cell kids do. They fight. Okay. They fight every day just to live. Like, and I, I'm happy for all the doctors and nurses that show their support and that really loves and care for these kids because it's like they're in it by themselves. They don't have. There's not a lot of funding for it. There's there's not a lot for these kids. And uh, I just pray and I just hope that someone would step up and help out. Um, I think I was like you guys. Um, it's not a part of my life, so it don't matter. But I hope that changes. I hope that um, even though you don't have a child that's not ill or not battling an illness, that you would um, just just have a heart um, and just help these children because they really do need it. They, I think they are really brave kids to go through day-to-day -day pains that we don't even understand the things that they go through. Even with Daniel, just to just to have a better outcome in life, he had to go through a brain surgery at nine. Um, and without the surgery, it doesn't get better. There's no cure for it. Um, it kind of, the surgery stopped the progression of it. Um, and we hope one day that he will be able to do the bone marrow transplant so he don't have sickle cell at all. And um, just thank you for giving us your time. Um, thank you for hearing our story. And I pray that it changes your heart and that you see sickle cell in a different way, in a different light.